Yeah, you knew it was coming One Piece chapter 1060 breakdown and as promised it is just me. I was tempted to get other people, trust me. This is one of those chapters, but then I said, you know what? It's just gonna be me and the people today, okay? We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Luffy has become one of the strongest characters in the series from many ups and downs in his life as a pirate. However, one of the most unique training styles would be fighting against animals, don't tell. Peter. But it worked. And for Luffy, the bigger the animal, the stronger he gets. And I know you want to get stronger too. So start today with today's sponsor, Monster Legends. Monster Legends is an awesome free to play mobile game where you can collect over 1000 monsters and build your own monster empire. I know all my Kaido Beast Pirate fans are going to love that. Okay, you can breed different monsters to create completely new species and feed them to grow stronger so you can destroy your opponents. But, but don't stop there. Take your game to the next level and create the best teams and challenge other monster masters in battles where you can conquer trophies, win rewards and reach the top league. And as if that wasn't cool enough, Monster Legends teamed up with TWD to celebrate the iconic show's return, creating six new monsters inspired by the heroes Rick, Daryl, Michan, Negan, Carol and Maggie. And just like Luffy, you gotta head straight for the top. So make sure you don't miss this unique opportunity to collect TWD monsters with amazing abilities, making them more powerful than any other monsters and to take your game to the next level. To start collecting TWD monsters, download the game now using my link in the description or the QR code. And only for a limited time, you will get a special free starter pack of rewards, 100,000 gold, 20,000 food, three gems and Mothman. So once again, thanks to Monster Legends for sponsoring this video. Make sure you download the game now and get the incredible TWD monsters. Don't miss the opportunity to download it through the link in the description and claim your free starter pack, which will get you right into the game and speed up your progression. So let me ask you guys a question. When you saw the title of the chapter and it said Luffy's dream, did you anticipate we were getting Luffy's dream? Because I sure did. Not complaining at how good the chapter was, but by golly, Oda is such a tease. Almost every chapter, I'm walking away from my computer with a slight tint of turquoise balls. Oda, at some point, you're gonna have to stop doing this to me. But the crazy part is, it's like Stockholm Syndrome. I'm not going anywhere. I'm gonna continuously take it. That sounds a bit weird, but I'm just being honest. All right. One Piece chapter 1060, Luffy's dream. This is the breakdown where we get into everything. I'm talking about deep into the crevices. We're pulling the skin back. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah, let's cut that out. So anyway, the chapter starts off and Luffy's finding out exactly what Sabo did. I'd mentioned that Luffy at this point probably has no idea the type of brother that Sabo is because they haven't spent that much time together, but he knows his brother and he's saying, yo, based on what I know about Sabo, he would never do something like this. And of course, I was expecting a morbid comment from Robin and Robin, she actually had a very sound opinion, which kind of shows you the stakes of where we are now, where Robin is not really joking around because of course it has something to do with the revolutionaries and she spent some time there. So I'm sure she has some pleasant feelings about them. So she's just trying to clarify to the other people, the other other straw hats the revolutionaries they're not really about that i'm not saying all the other straw hats they're looking at luffy like this the type of dude your brother is you gotta answer for his crimes not saying no one is doing that maybe zoro if he was dark skin no no no, no. We're, we're not doing that to zoro today we'll save that for another chapter luffy for the most part is just confused luffy's trying to set sail for alabasta and <laughs> i get it vivi is somebody that we felt like and again we're viewers and we feel like vivi was a part of the straw hat crew imagine how luffy feels so his immediate thought is to rectify the situation by going to where vivi lived not even caring if she's there or not and zoro had to check him and let him know hey 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 i'm the captain no, he's saying, yo, that's not going to do anything. The man's dead. And Vivi, the last time we saw her was at Mary Joa. Let's calm down. Caribou, by the way, and I had mentioned that, you know, they, they seem to have captured him after he overheard all that information. He definitely overheard it. I'm not sure if they knew about it, but they put him back in the barrel because Luffy somewhat promised Caribou a ride after he bagged him in chapter 940, where he pretty much declared himself Luffy's underling, but they're not going to trust Caribou. So they're saying right back into the barrel you go. He just needs a ride home. Zoro continues to spit major facts here, saying this is the den of the enemy. And Luffy wants to go to marry Jawa, and Luffy's somewhat calling Zoro a coward. And you don't do that to the next world's greatest swordsman, or you might lose a rubber limb. But he's just telling them to calm down. 
everyone on the crew is pretty much worried about Vivi. Well, everyone that knows about Vivi. I was really interested in the other Straw Hats that haven't met Vivi, what they were gonna say. I was looking forward to seeing Frankie and what he said and Brooke. And I think the responses were hilarious. I'll point them out in a second. But, but yes, this is a very dark time because you're just finding out that their honorary crew member might be dead. She's missing. Like, this is major stuff. And of course, her father died and they interacted with her dad and he treated them very well when they were in Alabasta. So it's a lot of feelings going on there. I liked how Oda drew Nami here because it's like a pacing back and forth, just showing how worried she is. <laughs> and I understand the sentiment. When you're worried, you're just walking back and forth and she doesn't know what emotion to feel, what to worry about the most. That's what Nami was going through here. <laughs> the other straw hats though, they don't know Vivi. So they can't comment anything about her and say, oh my God, we miss Vivi. Brooke is like, well, I've never heard anything about Alabasta and how badly it's been ruled. Frankie doesn't even say anything about Vivi. He's like, well, that's the same brother we met in Dressrosa, right? And Jimbe is just so generic. He's like, yeah, the robbery I heard it was quite tumultuous. <laughs> so it's, it's not funny, but it is because they really can't comment on it. They just can empathize. And so they're trying to say things to kind of join the conversation, but they don't have as much context as the others. So I love that Oda gave us the reactions of the other Straw Hats because I think it's important as well. So Zoro's logic here, because we're going to talk about what he says about ace because ultimately nami breaks down vivi is a straw hat i don't care what y'all say because of alabasta i wanted an x tatted on my wrist i still might one day when i retire but that is how much Vivi resonated with me. Zara says this. You can't forget about what you said about Ace that one time. That Ace has his own adventures. And Luffy, the most memeable face ever. And that will be 100% an emote on the channel. But Zara's saying Luffy trusted Ace up until the point that he needed help. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ace did not want Luffy there. Ace did not feel like he needed help. Ace felt like he got everything that he was deserving. And that he ultimately deserved to die again i've pointed out you can trust someone to the point that they don't need help and everyone can fend for themselves for the most part but sometimes people are going to need help even when they don't want it and that's the type of person luffy is so zoro's logic is sound but if luffy went off of how the crew feels about things what about robin and what she wanted what about sanji and what he wanted deep down of course they wanted to stay with the straw hats but ultimately they felt like they were making sacrifices and they did not need to be saved but luffy he doesn't care about that. And in this situation, it's different. I'm not gonna say these things are the same, Robin, Sanji, and Vivi. But either way, Luffy's gonna help you even if you don't wanna be helped if you guys are friends. Nami, how many times did you tell Luffy to get out of here after everything happened with Arlong? So at the end of the day, Zoro's logic is sound, but for Luffy and how he goes about things, what are you talking about? He's not gonna care. If anything came out that Vivi's in trouble, say Vivi was at this point in Whole Cake Island, Luffy would leave Wano and double back to Whole Cake Island to go save Vivi, 100%. Zoro's right though. If the opportunity presents itself, we can pitch in then, which if we hear anything, we can go to Vivi. Just stop bitch. He didn't say bitch. That's what he's trying to say. But he's not gonna say it to his captain. Maybe if he was drinking or something. But One Piece and Oda, he does not forget, okay? He's like a Lannister. He always pays his debts in regards to callbacks in the story. And in chapter 217, if you guys wanna go back and check it right now, does that look familiar? This is after they're leaving Alabasta. And of course they miss Vivi. And Zoro, the voice of reason again, is telling them, please, please quit crying. If you couldn't stand to leave her, then you just should have kidnapped her. No. And then, of course, Chopper, Nami, Sanji, Luffy, and Usopp responds with Barbarian, you're mean, Moss head again, three sword style. Wait, Luffy, that's not an insult. Wait, four sword style then? That's not any better. Listen, try Natto. Tell him he stinks like Natto. Fine, ball your heads off, right? It's just an amazing callback. And going back and rereading these moments, I feel amazing. It just feels amazing because that's when they find out that Robin was basically forcing her way onto the crew. I know, I'm going back a bit, but it's just, this is what we love. This is what we needed. The Straw Hats banter back and forth. We missed this. So selfishly in that moment, I was like, okay, what is Robin gonna say here? Doesn't really say much. She just jumps to the newspaper and she's saying, hey, there were a lot of developments while we were in Wano because we're in a closed off country. Things are gonna develop. And she's saying things are escalating fast. People, did you guys notice? that behind Nami and Robin, Zora and Sanji are fighting. It is beautiful. Guys, this is what we want. This is what we love. This is what we ask for. Anyway, Robin is talking about cross guild and that the abolishment of the warlords, it drove them back into the sea. So now they had to figure things out on their own or in cross guild's case together. Luffy and Nami is still befuddled at how Buggy was able to somehow subjugate for the most part, quote unquote, Crocodile and Mihawk. Luffy's <laughs> still like, there has to be some mix up. 
There's no way. Oda spears us here, or spears Luffy rather. Remember I mentioned earlier that Luffy, if there's a friend in need, it doesn't matter where they are, he's gonna try to save them. By Robin saying to Luffy, do you want me to tell you everything? It saves us a bit because Oda doesn't have to write in Luffy's decision in regards to saving Kobe or going after Rayleigh or saving Hancock. He's just on a need to know basis. And for them at that point, he doesn't need to know. But Robin is teasing. Hey, there's so many familiar names in here. Do you wanna know what's going on? Luffy's like, no, if there's anything big, let me know. Okay, I would consider Blackbeard going to Amazon Lily and being stopped by Rayleigh and kidnapping Kobe pretty damn big. I'm sorry, am I am I the only one? However, Robin is not privy to all the relationships that Luffy has with these people. But goddamn, that's a pretty big one. But Oda, he can't have that happen because personally, I think Luffy goes to try to save Kobe and Hachinoso is right across the way because they're on their way to Elbath, I presume. I'll talk about where I think they're going, but they shouldn't be on their way to Elbath. Hachinoso is not that far away considering where they are. But this was an out that I think was necessary for us to continue on our journey. It's almost like back then when we talked about Sabo and I would say, well, I don't think Sabo's captured doesn't make sense. And I don't think he's dead either. And the reason why Sabo couldn't be captured is because if Luffy finds out Sabo is captured, Luffy is leaving. And for us going from Wano, doubling all the way back to Mary Jawa, <laughs> Elba's right there, okay? Load stars right there. Let's complete this journey, then we can double back or figure out a way around over under the red line. I don't know. Either way, I like Luffy's clarification and him falling back. It's almost like a resolute opinion like Sabo's innocent. He was fighting himself and body language is so important here because he almost laid back and relaxed and said, you know what? I've come to my conclusion. I feel strongly about the fact that my brother did not do this. I just remembered my brother's dream. His dream is to make sure no one else has their freedom taken the way he did. He would not take someone else's life. But I have a question. Would Sabo take someone else's life to prevent them from taking someone else's dream the way his was? Mm -hmm. Think about it. Sabo we saw versus Bastille. That boy looked different than he looked like he was ready to take Bastille head off. Can somebody check and make sure Bastille was still alive, man? I know he's still alive, but I'm just saying. All right. Sabo had some fire in his eyes. I loved it though. I'm not gonna lie. I did love that. Let's transition to Luffy's dream. We get a flashback of the ASL backstory or the ASL flashback. We get a flashback of the ASL flashback. Luffy talks about their dream and they all declared their dreams and Luffy, he told the Straw Hats his dream while well, the Straw Hats and Caribou. And uh, we didn't find out about it. How do you guys feel about that? I'm a bit salty. Uh, you know, like I said, Uda, Uda, Oda has been doing the turquoise thing to my ball sack for a long time and he just continued this. The Straw Hats all surprised though. And even having conversations with some people, they were a bit perturbed by this because they're like, wait, this crew is about dreams and following and helping everyone accomplish their dreams. And they did not know Luffy's actual dream. They're astounded. Now, the reactions of everyone, it brought so many opinions. Personally, I don't have a great answer, right? But I tell you guys what I think it is. I think Luffy wants to go and have a party on the moon. I'm going to do more research and try to have a video where it's a lot more evidence to back up how I feel because I think Uta and Luffy's conversation could contribute to Luffy his dream, his true dream. Now we get some more context and Oda's just again giving us puzzle pieces, but not the entire picture because the reactions tell a story. It can't just be a party. It has to be something way more grandiose than that. And I'll tell you guys some of the opinions I've heard that have been pretty good. One that someone tagged me in on Twitter. Let me find them because I want to give them their credit for tagging me. Khalil the Goat 24, Vin Smoke Khalil. Thank you so much. He brought to my attention by the Volume 1 podcast. I believe her name is Megan. She had a great idea as to what she thought Luffy's dream could be. And I'll insert the clip here. And a link will be in the description to their podcast if you guys want to check it out. And pretty good. Pretty good. But watch that shit after this video, okay? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think that would be such a cool way to end One Piece. Is, you know, that's, I think, a part what Luffy wants to do. Um... I, I think that his dream, can I talk about it now? Sure, or, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I go think ahead. his dream, like, he'll say it like this, right? And everyone will be like, what the heck? That's impossible. But I think he means it a different way. I think his dream is like, I want everyone to be a pirate. Because pirate in his mind means freedom. I thought that was pretty cool. Where Luffy's dream is to make everyone a pirate. And I guess for Luffy, breaking it down would be to make everyone free. Because Luffy's all about freedom. And that's what he associates with with freedom it has some legs it has some legs not saying it's 100 definitive but it has some legs some other opinions where luffy wants to be a king of the world right luffy wants a big party with the world luffy wants to be friends with everyone luffy wants a party with revolutionaries navy and other pirates everything is outlandish but i think the answer is somewhere in the story we just got to go back and we got to find it and guys we're gonna 
fucking find it, all right? Again, the Star Eyes are telling him, <laughs> bro, there's no way anyone can do that. But Luffy's saying, once I become the king of the pirates, I have a shot. Which, making everyone a pirate is a crazy take. Becoming the king of the world is a crazy take. But man, I, I would like to see him try. But this goes back to some conversations we've had about what happens after Luffy finds the One Piece. And this could be Oda adding on information, adding on things for Luffy to do. It's kind of like, you know, in Pokemon Emerald, after you beat all the gyms, you fight the Pokemon champion, and now you have to battle Frontier, right? So at first, we had an idea of how things should go. The One Piece was going to be found before we go against the world government because we need context as to why the hell we're fighting. It could be that way. Oda came out and said that once the One Piece is found, the story is over. So now it's like, well, Oda, if you said that, well, Luffy's saying this can be accomplished after he becomes the king of the pirates. Are you going back or are you adding stuff? We don't know yet. However, really interesting stuff. Again, it is crazy as hell that Luffy has not mentioned this to anyone on the crew because he said he only told ace sabo and shanks and shanks was crying while tears are rolling down his face that's also roger's dream so in the midst of laughing that luffy said something like that so crazy the tears were streaming down because he remembered his captain and of course shanks and roger had an amazing relationship roger said something to shanks and shanks was he was bawling man so of course luffy saying something in the same vein of roger is going to impact him the most interesting reaction here is robin to me because she just had ellipses almost as if she was stunned like if she heard her before not saying that she did but she was speechless now everyone had a reaction and had things to say but robin's was the most i would say ominous is probably too strong but it had me thinking what do you know robin and also her question that she asked luffy about hey how did shanks sabo and ace react where she's interested hey what did they say to that you know when somebody says something crazy where it's like hey my girlfriend i finally told her that i have three nipples and I'm like oh okay okay uh what did she say what's the plan here it was something like that e either way I, th I think we went off the rails a little bit luffy's dream and whatever it is not sure if anyone is correct but i love the fact there's something about one piece it's kind of romanticized again romance dawn and just how beautiful the story has been i still can't believe that i, I genuinely have no idea of what luffy's dream could be 1060 chapters in jinbei goes from surprise or shock to just genuine laughter and He's saying, yo, I joined this crew of my own volition. So I guess it is my issue too. So that's why I don't think it's just a party. Unless the party is to party with the Marines or party at Mary Joa. Whatever it is, Jimmy is saying, okay, this is going to be troublesome. But hey, this is my crew. It is what it is. And I love how people went from dumbfounded to just in awe. Like now, I mean, people are saying, that's just love eyes. No, that's her looking at her captain just in awe of just the type of man that he is. And thinking back to the reason that she followed him in the first place. Just going against the grain and living the way he wants to live and i like how frankie's supporting him too like man i'm with it whatever it is i'm down but we got to find that last poneglyph though okay then we can go to laugh tail and ram is like hold on frankie don't make me grab your nuts again it's been a long time since we saw the last poneglyph that's like what she said we don't even have a clue on where to look and then we transition and the last time we talked about poneglyphs and where to look we heard about a man's card by fire and da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. sabo's mentioned the flame emperor and of course we go back to sabo's conversation sabo's about to talk to dragon and the revolutionary and tell them exactly what transpired at Mary Joa. At that point, Sabo seems a bit frantic. He can't find a white Denden Mushi, so of course the call is being traced by the intercepting team for the world government. And they trace Sabo to Lelouchia. We see the Gorosei again, and I'm not gonna lie, the Gorosei, every time I saw them, it reminded me of how I felt when I saw giant wasps, right? I just ran. I was just so terrified. It was like, why are you so big with no purpose? That's how I felt when I saw the Gorosei. Now I'm kind of like, okay, how are you guys gonna f this shit up now things are so out of control what are you gonna do and so they were very calm like lelouchia listen if i'm gonna saying i've been f***ing up the way i've been f***ing up and i hear sabo's in lelouchia i'm like oh word he where Lelou hey mo no 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 listen no 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 i i know i know i know, I know. listen this get in lelouchia yes yes that's that was the plan for today and that's what he was like oh shit here we go again great cleansing because that's one of the eight nations that rebelled a few days ago and that's where sabo chose to seek refuge so i mentioned this in my review not sure if i did a great job of explaining it but here we go again sabo is in lelouchia, lelouchia is a kingdom in lelouchia is not in the new world lelouchia is in paradise we had a cover story where ace visited lelouchia this is the town and i said brown beard but this was attacked by the peach beard pirates and they saved the city from peach beard so the commanders already had their stamp in lelouchia and they rectified that situation so therefore after they heard that sabo killed cobra it 
lit a fire in the people of Lelouchia and then that's why they were rebelling. And also Lelouchia is pretty close to Kamabaka Kingdom or Memoria Island where Kamabaka Kingdom is. I say all that to say Lelouchia makes sense in regards to story consistency. I love it so much because it is perfect. It's the perfect place for Emu to wipe out and so there's so much to tackle here. I'm surprised I'm talking this long but it is a very loaded chapter. People are talking about Sabo and saying Sabo is the reason why they destroyed Lelouchia. I do not think so. They're saying this was fate and Asabo is unlucky because Lelouchia was the first place they were probably going to take out anyway. So for them, things were kind of turning in their favor. It is not about Sabo specifically. It was about Lelouchia. They were rebelling and they were going to be extinguished regardless. Sabo letting Dragon know that even though he didn't have a white and did Mushi, it just shows me that he was very frantic. Not sure if he found out information, if he had just gotten to Lelouchia. But something also to point out, Sabo has bandages all over him. He's the only one seemingly that had some. So it seemed like Sabo was basically boxing by himself and they were supporting who knows either way dragon looked very stern he already told sabo if you did this i will never forgive you sabo's let him know yo i did not do this he didn't say who did it but he's saying it was not him he's just being blamed for it even though him being blamed for it is leading to the revolutionaries getting more acclaim than they've ever gotten in the story i like how everyone is telling him like we always had faith in you we believed it 100 that it wasn't you i mean that's pretty much how all of us were but it's like mm, what if right because we saw the crazy fire in your eyes and dress rosa but sabo has some information to tell them <laughs> and it's not just about hey i didn't do it when i go back and reread the reverie the queen dowager bonnie she was sneaking into the land of the gods and so this tells me that the battle was happening in the castle for the most part like they were going back and forth in and out and of course having morally you can do things like that and then having the support that they had with the revolutionary commanders sabo had gotten to the point where he was in the throne room at Pangea Castle. He was saying, I thought there was no king of the world, but the empty throne was not empty. He got a glimpse of Emu. Listen, I'm surprised Emu has not hemmed up an admiral yet because the fact that he was seen, no one, no one should have been able to escape, right? That is a huge stain. How could you let that happen? Either way, we see a flying saucer or something in disguise, and all we saw was Emu cross off Lelouchia on the map. And then it looks like it got disintegrated. Something else I want to point out, 16 rays of light came down. We noticed this when we were talking about the chapter once it got released, but I want to point out a comment by GM Trad by bringing all this together because 16 is very prominent here. First off, he says there's 16 beams destroying the island. Then celestial dragons, they shoot people across their path 16 times. Doflamingo's final attack is the 16 holy bullets. Rarely gave the idea for Luffy to go back to Marineford and ring the bell 16 times. And now his cover story shows a page where people theorize it shows the three ancient weapons. The sun has 16 points. Chapter 1060 or more. <laughs> This is funny. Chapter 1060 removed the zeros 16. Chapter will officially release the 16th of September. I'm going crazy. <laughs> so the significance is there. Trust me, a reread of Skype is happening and parts of Just Rosa because I think there's so much symbolism going on here and expect a video just talking about gods in one piece, right? Like I said, this is the start of the great cleansing. It is over for a lot of people and Emu having power like that. We're all speculating is probably Uranus. I mean, that makes the most sense at this point, considering the type of power. Yes, I know Pluton is said to be able to disintegrate islands. However, ancient weapons, I think they can all do that in their own way. We know somewhat what Pluton can do. We know what Poseidon can do. I would assume Uranus can do the same thing because Uranus should be the god of the sky. Could be Emu's power. Everyone is comparing it to Enel and the Art Maxim. We'll talk about all that. Trust me. But this is scary and one piece has been hitting now we go back to the sunny it was a few days later and it looks like things are going crazy and it's freezing and the next island is supposedly a winter island they come across a giant warm eddy i had to google what the hell an eddy is and ed ed and eddy kept popping up and somehow a youtube video was recommended to me about plank and his history and everything he'd gone through before he was on the show and so i went down the rabbit hole in regards to ed ed and eddy uh Sorry, let's get back on track. Apparently, it's like a warm whirlpool of water just going up. It's it's weird. But in one piece, of course, it's super exaggerated. Somebody was trapped in the water. Of course, Sanji sensed it. <laughs> and Nami's like, through a body of water? How horny are you? And I think it's perfect that Zoro's like, yo, I I'll cut it. Like, he just wants to cut everything, right? And Sanji's like, you better not leave a scratch on the lady. And he uses bird dance. What I love about this is that the person that was inside of this is Bonnie. I'm a bit confused. Because seawater is said to take away devil food powers. Bonnie, in this situation, looks like like a kid does that mean that she's originally a child uh and her bounty went up 
striker bounty was 140 mil now it's 320 but also jury bonnie and zoro mm, they have history right all that stuff they went through yeah they have history in sabaody so him doing that it's just so perfect i can't wait for her to get up expect a bonnie video it is incoming because we got to talk about other things about her and why she's here but also the island guys the island that i think they're at you know what i'm just gonna leave a hint if you already figured it out before i give the hint you gotta subscribe if you didn't you still gotta subscribe but here's the thing i'm just gonna say one random phrase and then i'm out of here do you think drake likes cold butterscotch candy thank you guys so much subscribe to the channel for more content like this follow me on twitter at brago dace follow me on instagram at brago d.ace thank you to my patrons i appreciate you guys so much thank you to my members i appreciate you guys as well and yeah i'll catch you guys in the next one peace Oh, you guys know I wasn't gonna leave you hanging like that. This is gonna be in another video, but if you stayed for end credits, congratulations, you won. So the island I'm obviously thinking about is Scotch's Island or Kaido's favorite island, his favorite winter island that Scotch was guarding when X Drake was trying to get Kaido's attention. Huh? You guys remember that island? I mean, it was a snowy winter island. It was Kaido's favorite. It should have been really close to Wano. We're assuming because it was being guarded by Scotch. I'm assuming that's what it is. Give me your thoughts. And I'm happy you guys stuck around, man. Monster Legends for sponsoring this video. Make sure you download the game now and get the incredible TWD monsters. Don't miss the opportunity to download it through the link in the description and claim your free starter pack, which will get you right into the game and speed up your progression.